Hello and welcome to Greed Academy Season 2. Today we're gonna have a look at Solana Block Explorers and touch a little bit on privacy. So there are different explorers out there and each of them has pros and cons and I have a whole companion video on comparing Solana Block Explorers, which you can find somewhere up there. Today we're gonna be working with two of them. First one is being my personal favorite, the Solana Explorer. Basically, an explorer really is the interface through which you can see what's happening on chain. So for instance, we could check out all of the blocks that are being generated. That's one of the recent blocks. And for each of the blocks, we can find all of the transactions within the block, see if they succeeded or failed. And then if we look at a single transaction, we can see what it actually does. However, Usually you're not looking at blocks because a lot of stuff is happening on Solana so you wouldn't ever go through an entire block. Usually what happens is you look at a specific transaction. So usually somebody will either send you such a transaction hash or side note, the wallet I'm using here is actually the same wallet that I used for the previous Greed Academy video. And if you have not seen that, you can check it out up here. We talk about basic wallet security, which is a very important topic. And in that video, we exposed our seed phrase of that wallet, which will be important to know for later on in this video. From your wallet, you click on one of those and you check out the transaction ID. You can also then paste that up here. And then for that transaction, you can see what happened there. You can see when it happened and you can see what happened in terms of state change. So my wallet, sent to another wallet, almost one entire sol. And down here you can see what actually happened on chain in terms of which programs were invoked. Twice the compute budget, that's not super interesting. This one is the interesting one, the system program transfer, which is responsible for transferring sol. And we see that from this address to this address, we transfer this much sol. And it succeeded, so it's actually persisted on chain. And this is public information. Since Solana is a public blockchain, everybody can see this. Everybody can see who I sent Sol to and who I received Sol from. And not just that, everything, tokens, app interactions, everything that you do on chain, other people can track. So let's do an exercise and actually track stuff. For instance, this one Sol, let's see where it went. Cause honestly, I don't remember anymore. So I sent it here to this wallet and look at that. That is also interesting because not only do we get information about the blocks and the transactions with the block explorer, we also get state information, meaning what is currently stored on the blockchain. What's its state? For instance, how much Sol is on each account? In this case here is just 0 0.00145 Sol. And what it also tells me is that this is not a regular account, this is a nonce account. And this is already an important thing that you should realize and what explorers are really good for, you can check what the account state is. Because a normal account should look like this. It should just have the address and be owned by the system program. This one has zero bytes and no Lamberts on it, so it's an empty account. It doesn't even exist. This is what it looks like if it's an account that actually holds some sol, then we see the balance here. But the important thing is it needs to be owned by the system program and not be a nonce account or a token account or whatever other kind of account because then you can't transfer from it anymore. And this is what happened to this account here, which is why I can't send anywhere anymore. This won't work because it's suddenly a nonce account. And we can use the Explorer to check that. We can use the Explorer to check what kind of account it is to then be able to tell if we can actually use it or not. Because one of the common scams is that people send you a private key or a seed phrase with a wallet that has Sol on it, but then you can't transfer it out and then they tell you, oh, send some more Sol to this address for us to unlock it. But of course, they're not gonna unlock it, they're just gonna steal more of your Sol, so don't do that. And you can use the Explorer to check that. Coming back to our on-chain analysis and tracking those funds, one of the cool things about SolScan, we can filter transfers. So here we see all of the Sol balance changes of this account. And my goal was to find this one Sol. Yeah, here it is. I sent from this wallet 
to this wallet. So that most likely is also my wallet. And then we can dig further. How did this wallet get funded? We can look back and see, it also says it up there, the initial funds for this come from Kraken. And we can't really trace it back further because obviously that's a centralized exchange and I put extra euros there to buy the soul. But yeah, you can't track it further back. And also important, you can't link it with other wallets of mine. Because obviously, as soon as you transfer from one wallet to another wallet, this can be seen by everyone. So if you keep sending Sol around, you'll have this cluster of wallets where people can then guess that those could all be your wallets. So I like to use, you know, clusters of wallets that don't interact with each other just so you don't know how much Sol I actually have. And not because it's so much, it's not that much. But I want some kind of privacy and I don't want everybody to know which apps I interact with or how rich I am. So I'll keep my public wallets separate from my private wallets. And ideally I go with one wallet per use case and always fund it through an exchange or some other privacy solution where it can't be so easily tracked. The only way to track it now is to interact with Kraken. And state actors might still be able to track that, obviously. But for me, it's more like a, I don't want every random Joe to know which NFTs I own or what tokens I invested in. Not like I invest in tokens, but like, you don't know that I don't do that. I could, just with other wallets. Okay, so we tracked the source of this, but where did I put it? That's the more interesting thing to me. I knew I had three Sol at one point, and I know that one of them I sent to this wallet, but where did that one Sol go? Let's play detective again. Checking transfers, here we received it, and then here we sent it to this wallet. Let's check transfers from here. I see I get plus, 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 minus a little bit, and this guy, see, three months ago, this happened, should have seen that coming, where this guy, which is not me anymore, did a create account and then he probably created a nonce account. Now it is a nonce account and this guy is the owner. However, I still don't know where that one Sol went. Well, let's try yet another explorer. Let's filter by success and the system program. It's not that many. We can go through them. From my wallet to this wallet that I then leaked. Oh yeah, and then I made it a token account. I remember, I made it a token account, which is a different way of bricking it and allowing nobody else to take that Sol. However, I made the mistake of then taking the Sol myself and then somebody else took the account. That's what happened. I made it a token account. That's what we see here. Then somebody accidentally sent some Sol there. And the cool thing is here, and again, that's why I like to work with all of the explorers. If I check it in here, this transaction, here I see legacy state. So at that point in time, the post balance was still one sol. So I still had the one sol on there. Just like to use several explorers to use the advantages of all of them. This one doesn't show me old state, but therefore I can filter by program and stuff. And it's just easier to see what, what happens in this compared to this. So on August 30, we still had the one sol. And here suddenly it was already empty because this guy is again creating that account and initializing that account. And that wasn't me anymore. That was October 16th. What happened in between for this account? Between August and October. There's one transaction in between here on October 13th. What happened here? Oh, see, that's where it is. There we go. What is happening here is I closed the token account basically leaving the address as a fresh address again and taking off the one soul that was on there. And I put it into the greed safe wallet, which I remember is actually one of my wallets, which back then had one soul. But if we look at it now, it does not. So where did that go? Well, once again, we can track that. Probably easier with one of those explorers. Spam, 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 spam. Value one sol. So here we got it. And here we spent it again. Where did we spend it to? Andy S. Well, that is somewhat plausible that that's my wallet. Again, everybody can name their wallet Andy S, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's mine. So cool that that's where it went. And that's where it still is. So apparently I own a wallet where I still hold that one soul and didn't do anything with it. Yep, that's it. I basically, I just took the soul off. That's all. That's all. That hasn't been my smartest idea. Why not? Because when I took the soul off 
and closed that account, someone else got the chance to make this account a nonce account and has this account bricked now. So everybody who still interacts with this and sends Sol there, if we look at that address, he can still withdraw nonce account if somebody sent some Sol there. And if you're a little bit confused here as to why they could just claim my wallet, Remember, in the first video, we leaked our seed phrase. So basically everybody has access to my wallet. And now everybody can sign transactions for this wallet. So if there was some Sol in there, they could take it out. Now, if you have the key for the wallet, there's something you can do to prevent others from transferring out Sol. There are several strategies, actually. I used the strategy of creating a token account and this other guy used the strategy of creating a nonce account. The important thing is that it's not a regular wallet account anymore, but it's a different kind of account, which results in the system program not being able to transfer out the Sol anymore. And this all goes quite into depth of the Solana account model and I have other videos on that. But my point is, don't interact with leaked wallets or wallets that somebody sends you because they might have claimed that account and then if you send more soul there, it's theirs, even though it shows up in your wallet. That's just such a classic scam on Solana that people keep falling for. And you can verify that that's the case by looking at the Explorer. And even if it's not the case, even if you can transfer, still don't interact with wallets that other people gave you the seed or something. That's the one thing. The other thing, think about privacy. At a minimum, I want you to be aware that whatever you do on chain, other people can see. So if you have one main wallet and you do everything with that one, not only is that not so ideal for security, because if that gets hacked, then everything is lost. But also in terms of privacy, as soon as somebody links you to that wallet once, they know all of what you do. Whereas if you have several wallets, then just one of those parts gets exposed. So yeah, think a little bit about privacy. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that, oh, we should only have private transactions. No, I'm fine with everything being public. I just want you to be aware that everything is public. And with that, we're gonna conclude this lesson of Greed Academy season two. Congratulations, you made it through the video. And now it's time for the exam, such that we can all graduate together. You can find the link to the exam in the description below. You'll get to sign a transaction and then use the skills that we learned today to analyze what happened there. And then you answer a simple question and you'll be done. So good luck with that. Thank you for watching this video. Go check out all the other Greed Academy content and I'll see you in season three.